Kane holani e, kane holani e, aloha kaua. So oh, um, I guess this is a good time we can talk about this. Um, there, there, it's it's uh, it's rather troubling to think that uh, this project that they're working on, which is a 30-meter scope telescope, is going to be put on one of the most sacred spots on Earth, which is Mauna Wakia. Um, and so this is a. Uh, uh, this is kind of unusual because there's going to be, it, this is a multinational uh, big conglomeration of, of scientists and schools and, and big money that's coming up here to put this scope up here. It's the size of a law stadium. It's 30 meters. Anyway, this has always been the realm of Kekua. This is the realm of the gods. This is where man is not supposed to be. It's only for times of when you're doing prayers and perhaps you're going to do as, as querying and stuff like that. But it's not made to be inhabited and occupied by any one thing. That's how sacred it is. So we've been fighting for Mauna Kea for many, many years and it's, we just, you know, it, we just get trampled on, trampled on continuously. Um, but there has to be a point of stoppage. There has to be a point where this, this stuff, comes to a, a, a more conclusive, uh, 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 comes out in a better manner than, than it has in the past. We've always stood for the sacredness of the mountain. And um, so we're going to continue to do so. So tomorrow, I understand there's going to be a, a group of people led by Pua Case and some of her gang that are going to be down at Pua which is down on the bottom where we started from. And a big uh, prayer vigil is going to go on all about the sacredness of this mountain. And I believe it's even coordinated with several cities in the mainland. And I think a couple of other countries are also involved in it. So anyway, it's a very special time. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's very interesting because as time goes on, we graduate and we educate ourselves. And in that educational spot, we've come to, to really understand and understand it deeply that truly there is no treaty of annexation in Hawaii. There is none. And as much as you can try to look for it and pretend that there is, there just is not. And if there's anything to the country, somebody produce it. And so, see, we have this, this problem where this is considered ceded lands, but let, let, let's go back to understand what se those ceded lands are. If there was such a thing as ceded lands, they are the stolen lands of the Hawaiian kingdom that is supposedly being held in trust. However, here's the double whammy. It can't be ceded because there was no treaty of cession. So ceded lands comes from a treaty of cession, which there is none. And now that we really, we really comprehend that that is in true, in fact, what we've, we've always been talking about, it, but finding the documentation, the necessary things to, uh, to hold that strong, to stand it up strong, has been very slow. Well, not slow. Actually, we've been moving pretty fast. It's been coming together. And now it's really got to a point where I believe we're up at the top of the ridge and the snowball is just starting to fall down. And so um, what I'm going to do, be doing here is uh, there's two things I'm doing, okay? Here's the best part. Here's the one that we're really doing. My, uh, my good friend and partner, uh, Michael Kumakai Lee, who is a Papakilohoku or a star... Um, a star man 
is also going to be on Halekala uh, tomorrow on the 7th. The same time, they're going to be breaking ground up here for the 30 meter scope. And he and I got together on the phone and we were talking about it. And we're going, hey, you know, last time we were up in Haleakala together, we we looked at uh, the Lee Rainbow that goes from the side of Haleakala over to to Mauna Kea. And I thought, I, I called him over and said, hey, you know what, Michael, you're going to be there. I'm going to be up on Mauna Kea doing stuff. Why don't we Why don't we shoot the rainbow across? Wouldn't that be a wonderful way of making it understood how sacred this is? Anyway, that's my, that's my joy, that's my love. There's another part to this, though, that is also a reality that we must contend with. And that's the fact that they think that they can just do what they want to do, and it doesn't really matter what laws. And it's like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't tell me we're a system of laws and then you disobey it. And so I also plan to serve them um, judicial notice of uh, trespass, that they're trespassing on Hawaiian Kingdom government land. And, and uh, along with that uh, comes the demand for them to cease and desist and to vacate the premises. And then I also added in a little thing just for their own understanding that the ramifications for, for failure to follow these instructions could end up in, in some very serious crimes, not only in the United States, under the, under the legal term of fraudulent conveyance, but also under international laws, under the uh, International Criminal Act of pillaging, which is to take somebody else's goods and give it to somebody else. No authority, which is what they're doing here, and somebody has to say something. And so we've sent it in so many different ways. I'm taking the, the opportunity to try to be on site there tomorrow during this ceremony to deliver my notice to them. You know, it's not about getting mad or anything like that. It's about, about we're not, we, we no longer can pretend this is not real. We need to move forward. We meet, need to move forward uh, in a manner that's dignified, that's representative of our, of our queen. And so we, we really seek to be Pono. Uh, uh, I didn't make the story up, so, uh, you know, all these things that are coming to be, coming to pass, these are things that just come to be because that's how life is. And I'm, wonder, I'm just really happy myself that I'm here at this time to be, be a part of this. Um, again, I, I, you know, I'm on a late for time. I've done stuff up here on this mountain since I was, since I was a child. Um, I actually come from Waimea, which is right across the mountain over there. And when I was younger, my dad used to work for fishing game. And we made all the hunter roads going around Mauna Kea. So I'm very familiar with this area, this altitude, the, the, the whole sacredness of it. I mean, this is like, talk about getting lit up. This is the time to get lit up. So anyway, I just want to say hello. Uh, and we are certainly honored to be here. about this yet, but under the section, how big is it? Uh, the TNT would be 184 feet tall, and it would go 20 feet below ground, cover over 21,000 square feet for office space and parking, and uh, it would disturb over 64,000 cubic yards of summit area, and create a footprint larger than um, three football fields. And so let's just kind of take that in. Um, Hamakua and Waimea, um, that would be like the kind of the viewpoint for this, but um, just because you can't see it completely in Hilo, it doesn't mean it's not there. And um, this is immensely huge on the top of an aquifer. So I know that Auntie was talking about mercury spills and chemicals. And so under what impact would it have? Um, this would develop some of the last undeveloped areas on the summit. It would multiply the industrial land use and produce 120 to 250 cubic feet of solid waste a week, because there's going to be bathrooms up there, of course. And um, 
also create 5,000 gallons of liquid waste a week. And that's on our, our hugest water source. And so that's something to really internalize before we formulate all of our opinions about something is looking at it from all these different sides. This is not a Hawaiian issue. It's not a cultural issue. It's a humanity-based issue. And if we just come into that space and respect that, I think that we can broaden our minds a little bit more and open our hearts a little bit more to the people that have been in this battle for a very long time. Kealoha couldn't be here tonight, but she has dedicated so much of her life to protecting that summit area. You know, Auntie Debbie, Uncle Poo Chang, Paul Nevis, Pua King, Kalani Flores, Kapule Flores. There's only six of them in this case. Six of them trying to protect the watershed. And so now it's gonna take every single person. If you're free on October 7th, we're gonna rally in a peaceful demonstration of Aloha Aina. We're going to start at 8 o'clock. If you can't be there that early, that's okay. Come when you can. Come hold signs. Come be in prayer. This is for everyone, for the next seven generations. And so um, I wanted to open this up for any more questions. Anybody else have any more questions? Going to explain. Oh, dude, this is Lalani. <laughs> Say aloha, Lalani. Aloha, everybody. <laughs> so when um, when this starts, you'll be able to see it from down here. There's the the area up here is Kapu to Radio, so you won't be able to you won't be able to go up into the area because it's disturbing to you know the the, the cultural practice. But um, but from down here, you should be able to see it's it's been nice and loud and strong. So right on. It's still very powerful from here. Okay. Thank you yeah. for explaining and, hey, that. Mahalo, everybody. And don't forget, if you can, um, take a selfie of yourself with the Protect Mauna Kea sign. Uh, those, those have been collected on Facebook. There's the Protect Mauna Kea page, or there's, um, you can email it to me, Laulani Teal. Uh, or not, uh, at laulani at gmail.com or um, Facebook me, Laulani Teal. Just find me. You're probably mostly my Facebook friends anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and, uh, and then I'll get it to these guys because yeah, we're collecting pictures of people holding a message, whatever message you want to send for the protection of Mauna Kea and you know, putting them together. And it would be really awesome to get people from different areas. Yes, because we know we have people standing with us yeah. in New York City and Palo Alto and totally. so Oregon beautiful. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And Mount Fuji, hopefully. Mount and Fuji. Most of the, uh, the yeah. islands. We're here with Kailana at the uh, Big State Capitol. Uh, we're here during the, uh, the protests against the, uh, the telescopes on the Mauna. Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you think is going on there right now as we speak? Right now, our people are chanting upon our gods and to protect and of whatever we have left and we're here to perpetuate with that and with the heaviness of that 18-story telescope that will be 
desecrating our sacred grounds on Mauna Kea should be uphold sacred and not desecrating our lands. No. I, I guess it's about a football field length, uh, length uh, telescope or something. And or two something. and a half of this state capital. Stack it all. In. Two and a half. Two and a half. Eighteen stories. It's, it's gonna be like offices in there and <laughs> a metal tin cab, darling. <laughs> but I, I wish it's yeah. Have fun. Well, yeah. Th thank you. Thank you. I, and also, yeah, yeah. We do not know where Kikamehameha the Great is buried, right? What if he's on the tallest summit of Mauna Kea? You know. Right, they desecrated his bones. Our ancestors never did mark the graves. So our king might be on top of the summit. So I, I look at it like that. We, we Hawaiians, we treat the Aina as if our kupunas are under us. We never did advance to destruct. Yes? Yeah. To see clearer. <laughs> yes. Mahalo, thank you. Aloha. Your, your sign says enough is enough. Yes, there's uh, over a dozen telescopes already on Mauna Kea. And um, my other sign here is showing Mount Fuji and an uh, image of the 30 meter telescope. Because Mount Fuji is sacred also to people who are, are practice the Shinto religion. And I want to, you know, make that comparison because. Uh, you know, this is a sacred place. We wouldn't want to, I don't think they would want to have a 30 meter telescope on their sacred mountain. Just like on um, the other side. This is St. Peter's Basilica, sacred place for the people, uh, Christian people, the Catholic people. I don't think they'd want to have something desecrating their sacred place. Their sacred place is all over the world and the sacred places of the Hawaiians deserves as much respect as anywhere else. Uh, we don't need this telescope so that, you know, humans can go colonize some planet, you know, in some other galaxy. It doesn't make sense, and we need to respect the planet we live on right here, this one. Yeah, before one goes into space, one should carry out the habits which are more in tune with, uh, you know, sustainability, you could say, and don't destroy. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, otherwise, absolutely. the same thing will happen in space. Oh yeah, it already is happening in space. There's already garbage in space because we're not respecting space either. And that frontier mentality that you can just go somewhere else after you trash somewhere is not one that Hawaiian people uh, adhere to. And you know, it's not good for us. It's not good for our people. It's not good for any people. And we need to start respecting the place where we live. And, and especially, Others need to respect our place. You know, Hawaiians have already allowed, you know, had over a dozen telescopes up there. Um, we can't just be the place where people just come and take advantage, you know, in the name of science or in the name of war, like with RIMPAC doing their war exercises. All from everyone around the world comes here to, you know, practice war in our waters. It's the same thing, you know, the, why, why here? You know, why should we allow this? We shouldn't. And uh, I hold the University of Hawaii responsible for allowing it. And uh, the, it, they're leasing it for a dollar for like 70 years or something like that. And it's the, the monies will go, I guess, to the general fund of the state. I, I don't know, for rent, renting out that place. You know, I, I don't know where the money goes, but I know lots of money is made up there yeah. by, you know, these telescopes. But it doesn't go to the wine I guess there's also the issue I was talking to uh, Kumu about uh, the, the, the pollution 
and, and some of the things, activities that have gone showing what they did before there, they're, they're trying to explore and trying to look at the universe, but it's not, they're not exactly approaching it in a long-term way and truly learning by, by living their philosophy and, you know, but. Yeah, absolutely, you know, it's that same thing, you know, we, we're not gonna take care of this place we are, we're just gonna use it, you know. And, um, we don't agree. Uh, too many telescopes. It's, it's Heva. But. Yes, Heva, to be wrong. In TMT, we're seeing on this sign too many telescopes. It stands for 30 meter telescope. And we, as Kanaka Maoli and supporters of Namia Hawaii, we say that enough is enough. We've already allowed 13 uh, desecrations, 13 telescopes to be built upon our sacred Mauna. And we don't want this last one. It's huge, it's massive and it's going to desecrate more land and we need to stop the desecration so that our children and our children's children and seven generations from now can still go up to Mauna Kea, worship there, enjoy there, connect to their Akua and um, just Malama Aina. Mahalo. Okay, we're standing with Mauna Kea here and with people all over the world about what, what's Eyo, going on. Aloha. My name is Ekini Lindsay. I am originally from Hawaii Island, Waimea. I am very honor, honored and grateful to be standing here for our Mauna. And we are very grateful to our people, the people who came out this morning uh, to support us and to support Pua Case and the rest of the warriors that are on Mauna Kea as we speak. Mahalo. 